Tulsa native and Moonbeam Flora founder Tyler Thrasher is joining us today and uh, has lots of exciting things to show us. But we're going to start here with talking about Moonbeam Flora and what that is. Yeah, so uh, Moonbeam Flora is an idea I had to make light emitting glowing plants. Um, I wanted to make something that people could bring in their home, plants they can't kill, um, plants that tap into this um, sort of fantasy vibe, this sort of um, ethereal um, aesthetic that I think we should all have in our home that inspire us and get us excited about nature. One of the first things that coming here today, I thought, oh, these only glow under black light. But in fact, they glow in the dark. The black light just charges them. Yeah, so they um, they can be charged with black light, sunlight, heat, um, you know, put them under your like nightstand lamp and they'll charge and glow for eight to 10 hours at a time sometimes. You call yourself a mad scientist. <laughs> Explain what that means yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, mad scientist, modern alchemist. Uh, for me, um, when I say mad science, I'm just really incorporating the creative practice into science. Art is messy, it's on the spot, um, it sort of strikes you, and you don't really feel like you have much control over the creative process. Science is very organized and structured. Um, and when you combine the two, in my opinion, you either get what was mo like medieval alchemy or what we jokingly call mad science. <laughs> um, and so I kind of just own that and play along with it. Well, what you have is so amazing, a crystallized cicada here. Yeah. So you do crystallized insects and crystallized skeleton bones of animals. Yes, yes, um, animal bones. Um, yeah, so sort of what I'm really known for is I synthesize and grow crystals on insects and skulls. And I got into this in college when I started caving um, in Springfield, Missouri. And I started finding all these crystals and minerals underground. And I thought, man, I would love to sort of collaborate with nature and recreate this. Uh, and one day I crystallized a cicada shell um, in my college house kitchen um, and it blew my mind. It was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen and I had seen nothing like it. And I shared it on the internet, it went viral. It became pretty much my full-time job is I crystallize insects. That's incredible. Yeah. What's your background before you started doing this? How did you get to crystallizing <laughs> insects and glow in the dark plants? So I went to school for computer animation, um, and I've always had a background in art and a fascination with science and chemistry. Uh, chemistry just makes sense to me. It's kind of like the Lego blocks of the universe, and it just made the whole world sort of fit together in my, in my mind. Um, and so I've always had a background with art and chemistry, and I was always hoping one day I'd find a way to marry the two. And I did in college um, with the crystallized insects, and then everything else I do sort of stemmed from that. But I went to school for computer animation. A little bit of a different path yeah. there, but yeah. you seem to really be <laughs> paving the way for something that no one else is doing. You're also featured in a Netflix document, uh, documentary, uh, The Future of the House Plants episode. Mm -hmm. And you said some of this stuff actually came after the episode. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm well known for uh, my passion for plants, not glowing plants, like rare succulents, hybridizing succulents, um, finding different ways to bring art into plants. And the, uh, uh, the documentary, they hit me up and they said, we want you to be in the houseplant episode. And they said, what do you know about bioluminescent plants? And I was like, well, I know a few people have tried, but we don't really have a substantial um, specimen for bioluminescent plants. And they said, well, man, it would be cool if we had like a prototype. And I said, well, I have this glowing mineral powder and these bleached plants in my lab. Let me dip a plant in the powder and see what happens. And we made a prototype and I freaked out because I realized I just made a glowing plant that you don't have to care for. It's already dead, um, it emits light, and it's very fascinating and very meditative to look at and watch glow. Um, they freaked out, the internet freaked out, and I was like, oh, whoa, I think I just made something. And then that got featured in the episode and has just kind of snowballed from there. And they're absolutely beautiful. What Thank do you, you think the future of houseplants is? Yeah, well, hopefully accessibility. Um, at the time when we did the episode, uh, the houseplant market was exploding, plants were becoming very um, overpriced and weren't accessible, but now with tissue culture, you know, rare and endangered plants are becoming very accessible. Hopefully the future of houseplants are that we have a bunch of botanists and um, citizen botanists 
growing rare and endangered plants from tissue culture that hopefully we can reintroduce into habitat and we have a deepened sense um, and appreciation for nature and plants. Yeah. Something that I think is really special about what you do is uh, not letting anything go to waste. So talk about what's in this frame here because yeah. you reuse everything, right? Yes. So um, yeah, my team and I have a zero waste policy or as close to zero waste as we can get. We take the excess paint from our plants and we shake the paint off onto the cardboard that our plants are shipped in or just cardboard from like shipments and shipping supplies and we shake the paint off we cut it out and frame it and most of our frames we go to like um, thrift stores or estate sales and we repurpose frames and then we have these glowing portals so we you know we have this like framed glowing collage and it um, they look like these like floating glowing portals at night just hanging on your wall so if folks see this and they say hey I want a picture like this or I would like uh, some glow-in-the-dark plants <laughs> can they buy plants from you how, how yeah. do they do that so um, on my website tylerthrasher.com I have a studio here in Tulsa that and we'll be letting people visit sort of early to mid spring um, we also have a subscription box uh, where each month you get a random glowing plant in the mail and then we're gonna use the profits from that subscription box to fund um, a lot of um, young creative minds. And you know, I'm trying to find people and kids that are in the STEAM, the STEM art realm and fund their ideas. So hopefully we can use glowing plants to fund creative ideas in young minds. I think you're well on your way and it, it <laughs> sounds like the future is looking uh, bright or glowy <laughs> for you, right? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> is there anything else that you have planned for the future? Oh, I got so many things. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the big things is I would love to do even more community outreach and do community workshops, um, have people visit the studio we, where we have glowing gardens and we're going to offer guided meditations in front of the glowing plants. Um, but I just hope that I can keep using this medium um, to support mental health, support my community, um, and use it as an outlet and show other people that um, you can follow your ideas, even if it's as wild as a glowing plant and you never really know where it's gonna lead. Tyler Thrasher, thank you so much thank for you. being here with us. Uh, once again, tell folks where to find you on social media. You have a big following, yeah. you have great content <laughs> there, and um, anything else you think that our viewers might wanna know. Yeah, so you can find me um, on Tyler Thrasher Art on Instagram, tylerthrasher.com. Um, Mostly you'll find me on Instagram and my website, um, but yeah, that's it. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much for Thank being you. here and best of luck to you. Thank you.